Support Bluefin University in the production of more videos by visiting the link in the description below where you'll find more details. Thank you and enjoy. So we mentioned previously in J.J. Thompson's experiment with the cathode ray tube that he discovered that atoms had negatively charged particles that he called electrons. And he actually calculated the charge to mass ratio E over M, right, the charge to mass ratio. But he couldn't calculate the charge or the mass itself. And that's where Robert Millikan's oil drop experiment comes in. So the question really was hey, how much charge exactly, right? How much mass exactly? So this was figured out by what I think is pretty pretty awesome. It's pretty sick. Um, so this apparatus here that I've drawn is kind of actually, well, I've drawn here is a cross-section of the apparatus they made. Just kind of imagine a cylindrical tube, right, a cylindrical container. And this is sort of a cross-section of this, this cylindrical container. So in this cross-section here, on the side of the container, they had this little spray bottle that kind of looks like a per, like those old perfume spray bottles, right? With the little like little puffy ball thing that you would squeeze to get the perfume out. Um, except in the little bottle, it wasn't a perfume. They put oil in it. Okay, they had oil in it. And um, what they did was they would spray oil droplets into the apparatus. And so these oil droplets could fall down. Um, they could they'll get, you know, get launched into this container like this, and then they could fall through this little slit or this little hole that was in, in the container. Okay. So when these oil droplets, um, they'd fall, they, they, were, they would be allowed to fall, and what they did was basically they uh, used the idea of the, the gravitational force to calculate uh, the masses of the oil droplets that they, they would see. And you might be thinking, okay, how do they see them? Well, there was a little microscope on the side of the container where they could look in and see these oil droplets. Now, another thing that was kind of important is that they had an x-ray source, okay, uh, over here on this, uh, I'm showing it on this side of the apparatus. I don't really know exactly if it was on this side, but the idea was that this x-ray source, what it would do is it would shoot, it would shoot x-rays in here into the, the container and it would knock electrons out of the air and onto these oil drops. Okay, it would knock them out of the air and onto the oil droplets. So the oil droplets would then be carrying a negative charge as they'd fall. Okay. So they'd zap x-rays to knock electrons out of the air onto the oil droplets, giving the oil droplets a negative charge. Okay, so they, they could fall. Now there were two plates on the way down for these oil droplets that, they, that were of importance. This top plate up here and this bottom plate down here, they were both metal plates that were linked to a power source. And when this power was applied, a voltage would be applied between these two um, plates. And uh, that would apply an electrical force. And since these oil droplets were negatively charged, that force would, would, would have an impact on them. Okay, so now let's think about this up here at the top right. So we've got a negatively charged oil droplet. Now this thing can fall, and that's gravity pulling it down. So Fg is basically the force of gravity. Okay, that's Fg, the force of gravity pulling it straight down. Now when we apply this electrical force, or when we apply this voltage between these two plates, we have an electrical force, which we're going to denote Fe, F electric, or electrical. So what's happening is that these negatively charged droplets, now why am I showing that the electrical force is pulling up? Well, because these negatively charged droplets, when they're coming down, they're, they can come down, but the issue is that what, the closer they get to this negatively charged plate, they're going to repel, right? Because they're up, or excuse me, they're like charges. Negative charge and negative charge, it's going to repel back upwards, right? So that's the electrical force pulling it back upwards. And on top of that, the positive charge up here is going to attract this negative charge or negatively charged particle. So now it's a question of which force is stronger, right? If the electrical force is greater than the gravitational force, then the oil droplet, the oil drop, will go, will be pulled up more, right? Because it's really a tug of war between the electrical force pulling up 
right? The electrical force is going to be pulling up, and the gravitational force will be pulling down. So it's a, it's a tug of war on this droplet where this thing will go. So, if, but if the if the electrical force is greater, it's going to go up. If the electrical force is less than the gravitational force, the gravitational force is bigger, then it's going to be pulled down. The old drop will be pulled downward. Ah, I'm running out of space. But if the if the power source, if the voltage applied is altered or adjusted so as to make that the the electrical uh, force counteract exactly the force of gravity, then the electrical force will equal the force of gravity, and the oil drop will stay, will remain just suspended in the air, which I think is pretty gnarly. Suspended in midair. Okay. So, so that's the this this third thing here: adjust electrical field strength to counteract the force of gravity. So, thinking of all that, we got through that, got through that, we got through this, and so what they did then was they knew that with with the mass of the droplets known, as well as the voltage of the plates known, they could calculate the charges of these different droplets. So they knew the mass of different droplets and the voltage of the plates. So they could use that information to calculate the, the charges of individual different droplets. Okay. So, and the reason why is because the force of gravity is dependent on the mass. So this is dependent on mass. Okay. It depends on mass. And the electrical force is dependent upon the voltage of the plates as well as the charge. Right? So basically they have a few different unknown they have two knowns, they knew the mass and they knew the voltage, so they could calculate for the charge. Okay. And they did that. What were their results? What they found was that all the droplets they did this for had a charge that was equal to some multiple of this number. 1.60211, or excuse me, 177 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. So what does that mean? That a charge equal to some multiple of this. Well, if you took this number and you multiplied it by by one, you would just get that number, right? If you multiplied it by two, you would get a different number. If you multiplied it by three, you get a different number. Multiply it by four, yada yada yada. The idea is that every single drop that they did this for had a charge that was equal to some multiple of this number, some whole number multiple. Whether it was this, what was it, whether it was this number times two, this number times three, this number times eighty-two. Whatever. The point is that, I mean, I'm not sure of the exact numbers they found, but the idea is that all of the droplets had a, mul uh, a charge that was equal to some multiple of this particular number, which meant that this must be the magnitude of the charge of the electron, right? This must be equal to E, right? So that means the charge of the electron, negative E, was 1.602177 times 10 to the 19. 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. That's the charge of an electron. Okay. That is the charge of the electron. Charge of an electron. Okay. So, given that, that means if they know E, then they can find M because they know he, he knew the electron's uh, charge to mass ratio based on Thomson's experiment. So. Basically, if you rearrange that equation to make it so that you, what you, to solve for the mass, the mass would be equal to the magnitude of the charge. Div, oops, the magnitude of the charge, just e, divided by the um, 1.75882177 uh, times 10 to the eighth coulombs per gram. So that meant you have 1.602177 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. Right, which is E divided by the 1.758821 times 10 to the eighth coulombs per gram, and then what happens is that you've got coulombs over coulombs, so the coulombs cancel, and then your units are one over one over coulombs, so you'd have one over one over, or excuse me, one over one over grams, so which is basically just grams, right? And the number that you get here is that the mass of the electron is going to be equal to 
three times ten to the negative twenty eighth grams. And so that was the mass of the electron. Okay. So I think this is a really cool experiment, but this experiment basically calculated the charge of the electron as well as its mass. So I hope that video was helpful. Thank you for watching. If you found that video helpful, be sure to hit it with a like and subscribe for more content. Also, follow Move University on the different social media links in the description below. Thank you and happy studying.